All right, so this is NBA 2K24 on the Steam Deck. This is the PC version of 2K24, so it's not the next-gen version you get on the PS5 or the Xbox. If you look online, everyone's kind of hating on this game because it's not the next-gen version. It has terrible reviews all over the Internet. I got it for pretty cheap, and I actually like this year's version of the game. Instead of adding fancy-looking courts or overhauling the graphics, they really focused on cleaning up the gameplay mechanics, made defense more meaningful, the controls are more responsive, and they just kind of tweaked what was already a decent basketball game to me. Now, I don't play the creative player mode or my park or whatever, anything like that, so I guess I'm not the typical 2K player. I just enjoy playing old school sim basketball, and to me, this game does that very well. So here it is on the Steam Deck. This is an original launch edition 512 gigabyte Steam Deck, which I got when it first came out. This is not the OLED version. The OLED version does look awesome, and if I were buying a deck now, I'd probably opt for that one. But the differences weren't enough for me to trade this guy in yet. And plus, I already have a ROG Ally and Legion Go as well. So anyways, for controls, it plays just like it would on a PS or Xbox controller. You move your player with the left thumbstick, you use the right thumbstick for dribble moves and shooting. Right trigger is turbo, left trigger is for defensive stance or posting up on offense. X is shoot or steal. A is for passing or changing players. B is bounce pass or taking charges. Y is lob pass or block. The D-pad gives you different coaching options and the left and right bumpers allow you to call plays and choose specific players based on position. There are also advanced controls, but I'm not really going to get into those right now. So in terms of performance, as you can see, it's running at a stable 60 FPS without any frame drops in game. I'm running low settings because I couldn't really tell the difference between low and high settings at the screen size and distance from the screen. I don't feel like I'm losing anything in terms of visuals. I'm running at full screen brightness, the colors look vivid, and the game feels great. On these settings, I'm able to play through a few full games with 5 minute quarters without having to recharge. If I'm on the go though, I would lower the brightness and maybe even cap the frame rate to 30 or 45, depending on how much battery I'm trying to preserve. In terms of responsiveness, I will say that there is a tiny, tiny bit of input lag playing on the Steam Deck as compared to playing on PC or even the Legion Go or ROG Ally, because it plays at higher frame rates on more powerful devices. It's barely noticeable, but it is noticeable because this game relies heavily on timing for jump shots, layups, and alley-oops, etc. So if you're already tuned in to a certain timing, you can feel those minute differences. It's nothing you can't adjust to, but it's something that I would mention. Overall, the game runs very smoothly on the Steam Deck, and the experience is very enjoyable. I think sports games in general are great for the portable form factor because they're generally less resource intensive than most AAA PC game titles and the gameplay is what really carries the experience rather than the graphics. So if you like playing 2K, I'd highly recommend trying it on the Steam Deck as you pretty much get the full experience as opposed to other titles where you might just be happy to have a form of the game that's portable, if that makes sense. So that's all I got in this one. I hope it was helpful or informative for you. If it was, please don't forget to throw an alley-oop to the like button and subscribe for more handheld gaming content. I'm going to go ahead and drop off here and let some gameplay footage roll here. For the second quarter, I switched to the broadcast view. It's more cinematic, but it's a little harder to play for me, but you can kind of see the visuals better in that view. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, Celtics are about to sweep the Pacers on the way to Banner 18. Jalen Brown finals MVP. Let's go green.
It's tipped. And now it's Brown running. He can go all the way and finish off by Brown. Well, the only thing is his responsibility today to find open teammates. Holiday, nice job setting the table there. And it's out of bounds. And they say it was a nice touch by Brown. These players can flat out shoot the rock. The 2K leaderboard shows us the top three-point shooters in the playoffs. Second, Miles Turner. And he is having so much success from beyond the three-point line. Some guys just thrive on this kind of pressure. Passes up to Neesmith. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the contact. Yeah, good job to take him right at the first team ball. And a chance for just a second now to check out the scoring breakdown for the Celtics. Well, they're off to a good start getting it inside and scoring at close range. Solid fundamentals so far in this one. And I really like how they move the ball tonight. Because of this selfless approach, they are piling up the assists. Here's Holiday. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. The Pacers making a switch here. Nemhard's checked in. McConnell against Holiday. It's tipped. Walker in the post. No good that time. Ice D from Porzingis. Celtics leading by three. Shooting 
59% up to this point. They're working for great shots, and they're hitting them. Right side, Tatum pulls it from 20. That one off the back iron and out. The Pacers shooting there about 46% for the game. And a wide open look for Halliburton. Good. And McConnell gets the assist from Halliburton. Second basket of the night. Saw, saw the defender closing and Halliburton got away in a hurry. Holiday the pass to White. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here it is eye open. Pacers trail by six. Holiday brings the double team on its way from McDermott for two. And the Pacers tack on two more. If they're doubling you, then you know someone is open to shoot. So smart move, passing it out. And Holiday gets to Brown. Plays it up and banks it in. Brown's got eight points. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed ten straight points in the paint. Smith finds Halliburton. Now, here's Toppin. Oh, good with the triple. Tatum, and a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It's going to be on Obi Toppin. Tatum got what he wanted there. Shot in the foul. Well done. And some changes here for the Pacers. Turner's checked in for Jalen Smith. Pascal Siakam comes in for Toppin. And it's Nee Smith in for Doug McDermott. The Celtics also changing it up. Al Horford is checked in for Pazinkas. And it's Richard in for Drew Holiday. And Halliburton not afraid to work for it on offense, taking the contact and still getting the pick. Brown outside. He feeds it to Tatum. Hook flush by Tatum. Proving he's more than just a go-to scorer. Brown also loves swinging the ball to open teammates. Halliburton is double. Inside, here's Turner, and Turner throws it down. Strong move to the 10, trying to get his guys go. Hard not to get motivated. GA right when your teammate makes that kind of play. And that could be the spark they need to make a little run as they try to even this thing up. A three from Tatum. Offensive rebound. Brown, no good. You often expect him to convert these types of shots, but the D must have made their presence felt to prevent that one. And, and still capable of being a defensive anchor. Orford is excellent at positioning himself to block shots. They kick out to Tatum. A three-pointer off the mark. Okay, let's just say it. This has been a week for him. Not quite a break of year, I think. It's important that Siakam plays with confidence from there. I mean, when he does, the results are often like that. And now, the first time I've gone here for most of all, adjustments are a part of the game, and the coach sees something he doesn't like here. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to get your group together and make sure everyone is on the same page. And Indiana making a change here. Nemhard's checked in. Here's Tillman, off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. And that's what the pump fake's there for. Get your man off his feet and drive right around him. Halliburton passes to Siakam. Back to Halliburton. Looks one up. He doesn't hit that one. Good work defensively by Horford. The pass to Walsh. Pacers trail by five. Here's Nemar. That's good. It's Halliburton with the assist. Nemar's got his second bucket of the night. And the combination of his quickness and soft touch around him really allows him to pull off shots like that. A lot of players don't have the reverse in their arsenal. Here's Neesmith. 
rebound by the Celtics. They've led by as many as 11 points. To the right side. 41 seconds left now here in the second. Tillman passes to Horford. And the tuck by Horford. No chance to shut that one down. Horford's reach made that play unstoppable. 35 seconds left to play here in the half. Halliburton out the wing. Hands the shot from the wing. Halliburton's got eight points. I tell you what, it's, it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this seat. And the foul on Myron Turpin. And this is the first foul of the game. First, first Isaiah Jackson. He's checked in for the Pacers. Walker comes in for Pascal Siakam. White the pass to Tatum. Stolen by Walker. Fast break. Here they come. And out of bounds as the Celtics gain possession. That was an... Okay, let's say that was an odd play. You don't see misconnections like that too often. Now, Tatum. He's got seven. There's the lock to Brown. And Brown throws it down hard. Bustling that one in. JB is a strong individual. With one on the clock. That one, no good. And that'll do it for the first half. A competitive game so far. Your Pacers. Thanks, here with Rick Carlisle. Coach, what was the biggest concern for you in the first half? Well, our shot making wasn't good early. Uh, we had problems defending the post, obviously. And the rebounding is a big challenge with these guys, so we got to pick it up in all those areas. A lot to talk about as you go through the game. Thanks. Back to you guys. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hi again, everybody. Ernie Johnson alongside Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. And we're excited to be here for the Eastern Conference Finals. Taking a look at the Celtics, they have taken care of business in the first two games, but they got a fight on their hands tonight. They're not going to be able to just cruise to a 3-0 lead in this series. It's going to take some effort in the second half. Kenny, what's your take on Boston so far? Most of the damage they're doing is in the paint. They've made a concerted effort to work the ball inside and create high percentage looks. And that could open up the perimeter for them in the second half, which is being worried about the post game. Shaq, your take on Indiana. Well, a lot of their points came in transition. They dictated the pace of the game. It was a fast pace. Put the defense back on its heels. I say keep attacking the second half. Do not slow down. That about wraps it up. Time now for the second half of the game. We go to Kevin Harlan for the call.